This is a production of Cornell University. So, uh, <clears throat> the person who drew the luckiest number of the day, <laughs> when she drew number one, uh, is Yunju Lee. And uh, Yunju comes to us from Incheon, Korea. Uh, her mentors were Michael Gore and Elodie Gazave. And um, her post-graduation plans are, uh, she's waiting for the admissions decisions to a graduate program in Europe. So we wish her luck with that. Her, the title of her seminar today is Polymorphic Inversion in Brassica Navis. Um, hi, um, my presentation today is about polymorphic inversion in Brassica Navis L. Uh, Linnaeus. I'll be talking about the evolutionary process of um, Brassica Navis, uh, process of Brassica species and what is polymorphic inversion and what are the strategies that we use to detect polymorphic inversion and how we process the data to find informative SNPs that could help confirming the polymorphic inversion in Brassica Napa species and results and conclusions. This is a triangle of U, which represents the relationship of six different Brassica species. Um, there are three ancestral species, respectively Brassica nigra, Brassica campestri and rapa, and Brassica ulleraceae that has uh, one subgenome B, A, and C with a chromosome number eight, 10, and nine respectively. And there are three um, species that were created due to interspecific inter hybridization between um, two ancestral species. For the purpose of presentation today, I'll be um, focusing on interspecific hybridization of Brassica napis. So the evolution of Brassica napa species were created by um, Brassica oleraceae, which is kale, and Brassica rapa and campestri, such as bok choy. Um, they went through interspecific hybridization to create Brassica napa, commonly known as canola. So um, Dr. Elodi Gazavi was working on Brassica napa species and she found a putative um, polymorphic inversion. Polymorphic inversion prevents homologous region pairing during meiosis, which um, do, uh, let, do uh, go through um, recombination between inversion heterozygotes, but products are not recovered. That um, it's a problematic for the breeders and the farmers who are looking for better or um, higher yielding crops. And the frequency distribution of chloroplast haplotypes of Brassica napis and its sister uh, textile lineage have strongly suggested that Brassica napis have polyphyletic origin with um, initial hybridization event lead, um, leading to synthesis of Brassica napis multiple times and um, Im probably involving different maternal ancestors. H1 is showing the um, ancestral lineage, and H2, the re represented in blue, is showing um, derived character of the lineage. So for studying of polymorphic inversion of Brassica napis, we um, gathered 16 samples worldwide, and we mapped the chromosome map of Brassica napis um, there are two, two subgenomes in Brassica napis with total of 19 chromosomes. Um, blue showing chromosome A and orange showing chromosome C. I studied um, specifically chromosome C2, which has a large polymorphic inversion. And um, these, for, based on this chromosome map, we gathered um, cr uh, primer uh, data from, for studying uh, this pol putative polymorphic inversion. So the goal of this project was um, first uh, GBS, genotyping by sequencing, and WGS, whole genome sequencing, were pre-sequenced by Dr. Eludi Gazabi, and she found the putative inversion of Brassica napis samples. So we used um, Sanger sequencing method and other bioinformatic pipelines to validate whether the putative inversion that she found were um, real or not. So these are the steps that we use to determine polymorphic inversion. Um, w, uh, whole genotyping, whole genome sequencing, which is sequencing the whole genome, and 
genotyping by sequencing, which is looking for um, single nucleotide polymorphism in the genome, were pre-sequenced by Dr. Elodie Gazabi, and um, we used um, SNPs that were from WGS and GBS to compare those uh, compare to um, confirm polymorphic conversion, and also used a Sanger sequencing method to validate for polymorphic conversion. So um, there were 16 samples worldwide, and we um, harvested those leaves and um, using five different primers because there were um, SNPs were within all different locations, and they were large that it was hard to flank all those genes with one primer. After DNA dis extraction, we went through PCR to um, amplify a gene of interest and do um, DNA purification to get rid of contaminants and um, went through Sanger sequencing, which screens the identifi identification of sequence variation. We used um, different bioinformatics pipelines from um, Linux operating systems to Python and Excel for confirming if the polymorphic conversion is real. So for Sanger sequencing, we looked at the pattern where um, one is showing the fixed alleles across orientation, which does not give informative um, or unique information. And two, three, and five is alleles that are variable across orientation. And we can see that there are some inversions within, um, the, within the pattern, but however, if you look at up there are um, uh, there are alleles that are just fixed, that which does not give informative SNPs. However, we look at number four. There are um, SNPs that are different in two orientation, but they are fixed, which could be uh, informative. This is the result from one of the uh, data we got from Singer sequencing, that a first letter is a diagnostic of ancestral lineage, rep respectively G and T. And second letter is a diagnostic of drive, drive lineage, um, A, T, and G, C. Um, so for after Sanger sequencing, we use the bioinformatics pipelines to um, look for SNPs that are in just whole genome sequencing and genotyping by sequencing and SNPs that are shared by both. And there were around 23,000 for WGS and 1,000 for GBS and 545 for shared by both sequencing method. For the um, summary of the comparison from WGS and GBS, they were sorted according to subset of differences and similarities based on the ancestral lineage and derived lineage. And the proportion of SNPs were calculated that were no longer fixed or for opposite alleles based on whole genome sequencing. Um, there were a total of 112 SNPs um, fixed across opposite alleles according to GBS. However, there are only 106 SNPs in um, WGS. And, and also there were a total of 112 SNPs that were fixed in two groups according to GBS, but out of 112, there were six, uh, out of 65 SNPs, there were 16 SNPs that were not informative due to um, low statistical power of GBS, which can be seen in the orange column that doesn't have any number of alleles. And there were a total of 106 SNPs that 60% um, were found to have both alleles and 80% showing neither of the alleles. That um, finally, this uh, data showed that genotypes detected by GBS were confirmed by whole genome sequencing, which the inversion might be real. For a future study, um, bionanotechnics will be used to map genome of selected brassica samples. And bionanotechnics are the technique that um, do the whole genome restriction map to validate assembly or identify structural variation. And based on the result from this biodynotechnique, we might be able to validate whether the inversion is in the whole genome level or not. For conclusion, so the potato inversion, inversion was detected by GBS, and that was confirmed by whole WGS. And it was, again, validated using Sanger sequencing. And I also learned um, the informative, inform, 
important bioinformatics technique that could be useful for modern and 21st century breeding program. Thanks for uh, Dr. Gore and Dr. Elodie Gazabe and um, uh, Nicholas Kasmar for helping me for um, doing research. And thanks for Dr. Skellen and Dr. Smart for allowing me to present in here. Thank you. Um, because uh, if there is an inversion in the species, as I said before, there might be a recombination, but the products are not recovered, which means it won't um, create the species that you are looking for. So it is a problem for the breeders who are um, trying to make a new and better crops. sure about that. <laughs> I don't I don't think we did like multiple lineage studies. So this is just one of Yes. Other questions for you and Jim? Good job. <laughs> this has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.